And what happens, these thoughts have, this state of not having thoughts has not come back. There is no self-talk in what we called yesterday the symbolic mind, except for some uh, strange things, perhaps. You can still, I can still, this can still plan and read. Um, in the morning, there's some kind of a download of what might have been stored the day before. And if I'm borderline hypoglycemic, if my blood sugar gets very low or I get very tired, then some thoughts will kick up. My best indication of that I'm, that I'm really tired or exhausted is thoughts start. Uh, this goes on virtually every day, all day. <clears throat> and uh, these are the kind of states you're in. There is no lack of comprehension. I can even pass for being uh, coherent. Um, there's nothing interrupted about this, nothing fringe or vague. It goes on continuously. There's no work to make it take place. It's just there all the time. If any of you have anything like this, I would strongly encourage you to get in contact with the folks who are doing studies on this. Uh, I'm in several studies right now. One is at IONS, and uh, Dean Radden and uh, Cassie Vieten will present that, uh, that, that study tomorrow. And that um, John Aston at 12 o'clock will present one from the Bauman Institute. And there's another fellow named uh, Jeffrey Martin who uh, heads the Center for the Study of Non-Symbolic Consciousness, who's done a very detailed, in-depth study of, of folk who've had things like this. So if you have any of those things, I'd strongly encourage you to get involved in these studies. If you don't know who the people are, contact me. You got my email there. Um, the studies are very useful. We can demythologize a lot of this thing. There are EEGs involved in the uh, ION study, and hopefully fMRIs in the CNS study. Next slide. Things we know about the eye, uh, pervasive across this conference, uh, scientifically, we know that the eye is a, a collage of many different distributed brain structures. Uh, many factors in the course of our life can reshape our self. There's many talks this morning about selves. We have many, many selves, perhaps as many selves as there are interactions with different people. Uh, I'll just grab, for example, Damasio's three-part hierarchy for the self, how he describes the self. He's got a proto-self, a core self, an autobiographical self. Next slide. And how this manifests is the proto-self, not surprisingly, basic physical functions, two main locations, brainstem hypothalamus, core self, uh, which you might expect, emotions, issuing commands, visual activities, uh, four places it's found, autobiographical, the one we most care about that talks to itself all day long, arguing and losing. Uh, is located in many places, hippocampus, Broca's area, many parts of the cortex, medial, prefrontal, cingulate, premotor, insular, somatosensory. And click the next slide, please. Schematically, this is what it looks like uh, where the eye is spread all over the brain. Again, uh, This is thrown together. My friends here who are neuroanatomists, please don't punish me too much for this. This is an approximation of where they are. The idea here is just to show the concept that the eye is not sitting in one place running things. It's scattered all over the place depending on what its functionalities are and what parts of the brain are being used to do something. So when you worry about having one eye, remember it's spread all over the place. And next slide. Even doing a medial slice interiorly, you can see other places that we have a strong belief uh, actually have a strong role to play in what the eye is. These are all peer-reviewed scientific papers. So, Keep in mind, there's not one eye. It's spread all over the place. And next slide. What I look at is very briefly, uh, can we do some experiential studies? Very briefly here ourselves in this, in this time we have. The talk was original, they were supposed to be much more experiential. It had been 35 minutes. We're going to do a lot of practical things, but they cut the times down a lot, so we're truncating that. These are very simple things we're going to do right here. What I'm going to do is, while I have you do these little exercises so it's not just dead space and you're wondering what's going to happen, is I'll be chanting three verses from the Bhagavad Gita. That's only to uh, live up to the multimedia uh, sense of what this session is supposed to be. So I'll be chanting while you're, you're doing your thinking. Uh, so this is three, three Gita verses. Next one. I'll tell you what they are at the end. The first exercise is to look, we'll do this very briefly, Look at your own mind. The key to any of this awakening is a very simple, direct process of awakening is to do some very simple logic experiments. Next slide. This is to construct three little buckets in your mind. And I'll give you one minute, which is not really enough, but it's all the time that we have. 
to look at the distribution of the thoughts you have. How many thoughts are about the past? How many of your thoughts are about the future? And how many thoughts, Eckhart Tollian, are about now? Now thoughts have to be thoughts that are really now. Not what happened just last second, but what happened right now. Okay? So we'll give you one minute and close your eyes. And this Bhagavad Gita verse takes about three verses. takes about a minute to chant. So while I chant that, when I stop chanting, and you have to have your three buckets filled up, or not filled up, as the case may be. So past thoughts, future thoughts, and now. Okay? Naiva kinchit karo miti yukto manyata tatpavit pashyan shrinvan sprishan jigran ashnan gachan svapan shvasam pralapan visrajan grunnan unmishan nimmishan ape Indriyani indriyarteshu vartanta iti darayan Brahman yadaya karmani sangam chaktva karumiyaha lipite nasa papane padma patram eka ambasa. Okay, one minute more or less is up. Thoughts about the past? Lots? Yeah. Thoughts about the future? More. More about the future. No. More about the past? No. How about now thoughts? Okay, what did you put in the now thought bucket? The chanting. The chanting. Yeah. Go ahead. As you heard the chanting, that was a now thought for you? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was actually thinking about it, but I noticed that that's when I was present, when I was focusing on the chanting. Mm. So it wasn't so much a thought as it was an awareness of that. But there's a great insight there. The fact that you weren't processing thought, you were just focusing on the chant itself. So thought perhaps arguably has stopped in that time as far as self-talk. Right. More on that later. Yeah. Point being that it's all about the past, it's all about the future, very little of it is about right now. Next slide. Interestingly, uh, if you run an fMRI on people, uh, the fMRI shows it's almost exactly the same neural pattern for remembering the past as projecting the future, one tiny perturbation. So the past is just like the future reconstructed or conversely. Uh, we do exactly the same kind of processing. So past equals future. Not surprising the buckets are both very large. How we create and lose memories. You may have heard this before other places. Uh, this is not the microtubule version. This is the pre-microtubule version. Um, this is a sea slug, sensory neuron, motor neuron together, waiting to do something. If nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, then it begins to atrophy. If something starts to happen a lot, it starts firing together. There's an axiom in cognitive neuroscience which says neurons that fire together wire together. So these become glued together. With time, the chemistry at the interface actually changes. This becomes a memory node and actually, arguably, is a point of I-ness. Our brains function very much the same way. Next slide. This is the hippocampus, whose job it is is to go out and gather up short-term memories. And it also runs around and gets data from all over the place. Point being here, you may have many, many memory sites spread across your brain, uh, shown here as well as the previous slide, just from individual memory events. 